Yes, yes. Um, welcome to another episode, another doorway, another portal, another show entitled Am I As As I Am? Most importantly, though, As You Are. Okay, today's topic and question is Are we in the matrix? Or are we in a matrix? Are we in the matrix or are we in a matrix? I know it sounds like a play on words, but there is an actual meaning to what is being said. The word matrix and the word matrix sound very similar because they are, in a way, connected and related. So, we pretty much have the idea of what a matrix is. Um, so, let me start off by giving the definition of the word metrics. And once again, this came to me because how spirit communicates to me is it downloads information in me in the form of a question. And this was the question that it presented to me was, are you in the matrix or are you in a matrix? And this led me down the path to, I knew what a metric was or a metric unit, but in the form of the question that it came, piqued my curiosity. So I looked into the definition of the word metric or metrics. And remember with everything that's given to you, this is from a metaphysical mind, from a perspective of the occult way of being. Remember occult just means occult just means dark or darkness, um, the hidden aspect from the word occultum, O-C-C-U-L-T-U-M, just means that which is hidden, that which is dark. So we're going into our dark hidden mind, which is known as the subconscious mind, to pull out the subconscious mind and bring to the conscious forefront of understanding. So we're going to go into the word metrics at first for those who aren't familiar with the word metric or the definition of what it means. And we're gonna incorporate it into something which is immediate or internal. And this is what a metaphysical mind does from an occult aspect of looking at things. Okay. Uh, once again, I thank you, my subconscious scribers, my subscribers. Um, it's always appreciated, and your acknowledgement is always acknowledged in return. So let's go into the first doorway, those who are familiar with this show. Is the definition of metric. The dictionary definition is the patterns of rhythm and sound. The patterns of rhythm and sound. This is the definition of the word metric, or what metrics is. Now, when I look at the definition with the metaphysical eye and an occult mindset, I immediately incorporate it into something immediate and or internal. So what this meant in the opposite light but the opposite spectrum of understanding was <clears throat> your heartbeat is nothing but rhythm and sound that eventually forms a pattern of existence. <clears throat> You're nothing but the function of the heart. The heart is nothing but tune and kinetic energy. 
The heart is nothing but a tune and kinetic energy, which is this moving energy. It's a tune in movement, just like the definition of the word metrics, which is the pattern of rhythm and sound, right? Now, what does metrics and matrix have to do with each other? Well, I'm just unfolding as I go along. Um, still more from a metaphysical perspective, um, it says, that's why people easily become possessed by music and movement, no matter how low vibrational the music is, the music and or message is, because it plays as a heartbeat substitute. In actuality, though, it's really just noise and stimulation, which is really just distractions within a simulation. So we got the word simulation, and we know that's kind of incorporated or tied to the word matrix, right? Patterns of rhythm and sound. We're talking about the heartbeat, which is nothing but rhythm. You got the beat, rhythm, and you hear a sound from that rhythm that eventually forms a pattern of existence, right? Because your heart, you're moving according to your heart because you have heart. You're doing something because you have heart to do something. So this is the metrics or the metrical understanding. Okay. Um, and basically, you're nothing but the function of your heart. Uh, the heart is nothing but tunes and kinetic energy. That's why people easily become possessed by music and movement, no matter how low vibrational the music and or message is, because it plays as a heartbeat substitute. Okay, so I gave you the dictionary definition of the word metric and also a metaphysical spin on the dictionary definition of the word metric. Okay, the patterns of rhythm and sound. What we know as the word matrix is also a certain kind of pattern, a programming pattern. Right, so we have a tie in there to some degree between the word metrics and the word matrix, or metric and matrix. Okay, another dictionary definition of the word metric is to measure principle. <clears throat> because a metric is nothing but a unit of measurement. This is the dictionary definition of what a, the word metric means, a unit of measurement. So it's just a certain kind of measuring, quote unquote, of an energy, a force to determine a certain pattern that's looping itself over and over again. The looping, the pattern, once again, tied back into the word matrix. And this, we're talking about the word metric at the moment. Okay, so once again, this is the question, the topic of today's video. Are we in a matrix or are we in a metrics? So this is the understanding. Now looking at, once again, the second uh, dictionary definition of the word metric, which is to measure principle, pretty much. Looking at that dictionary definition from a metaphysical eye and an occult perspective, it's interpreted as we're nothing but personalities that function in principality. Without principle, what we know as personal doesn't exist. Now we have to have an understanding of what is principle and what is personal. The difference between principle and personal, personal and principle. Principality and personality, personality and principality. For example, there is no talking to each other as the persons that we are without the principle of communication first. So communication has to first exist as the foundation for the structure of talking to take place. One person talking to another, to another, communication has to exist in the middle first and foremost, primarily. So there is no talking to each other if communication doesn't exist. Communication is principle. This is personal. Okay, so once again, 
uh, a metaphysical perspective of two measure principle as a definition of the word metric. Looking at it another way is with nothing but personalities that function in principality. Without principle, what we know as personal doesn't exist. So, um, there is no talking to each other without the principle of communication first. Principle is a built-in knowing intelligence. Okay, so this is the word metric so far. We're looking at the dictionary definition of the word metric and then looking at it with the metaphysical eye. Okay, so now let's look at the definition of the word matrix, the dictionary definition of the word matrix. Definition is a two-dimensional experience, just like thoughts, i.e. the brain. Numbers and symbols, rows and columns. This is the definition of the word matrix. A two-dimensional experience, numbers and symbols, rows and columns. Okay, so... Looking at that with a metaphysical eye, um, it's kind of, it's an environment material, an environment or material, pretty much. A two-dimensional experience is the thoughts or two-dimensional screen, like right now this video is in a two-dimensional screen. The difference between two-dimensional and third-dimensional is you can see me talking, but you can't reach out and touch me. There's no reaching out to touch me. All you're going to touch is a screen. If you try to reach out, you're going to touch a screen. You can't touch me. So this is known as two-dimensional. Okay? Just like your thoughts. So you have thoughts, and you're trying to turn this two-dimensional intelligence into a third-dimensional existence. So the matrix is a two-dimensional experience, which is the thoughts, the brain, so on and so forth. <clears throat> and this is basically connected to the word matrix, okay, which is the brain. Brain is the matrix. Now, we're going to go into certain things of what the metric actually is, okay? Um, when it gets to a more deeper understanding. Okay. The word matrix comes from the word metric. Metric comes from the word metron. Metron derives from the ancient word metatron. And metatron derives from an ancient word medu ra atan. So, Undu Ra Atan, when broken down in simple terms, and this is comedic language, or broken down in English, what that is saying, Medu Ra Atan, simple terms, it says atomic light code, or given atomic light. That's what Undu Ra Atan means. Atomic light code or given atomic light. An atomic light code is a thought. Meaning what? Meaning every thought is an atom. Every atom is a light code, and every light code is a floating thing or a floating intelligence that creates its existence within the matrix, within the brain. To sustain and uphold the existence and the function of the matrix itself. Why am I saying all this? Matrix comes from the word metric. Now, when we go into what metric is metaphysically, I'll just give it to you in a nutshell pretty much. The matrix is the brain. So you're saying, okay, so where is the metric then? If the matrix comes from the word metric, what is the metric? Metric we just said was patterns or sound and rhythm. 
patterns of sound and rhythm. Sound and rhythm comes from the heart, right? It comes from the heart. So the matrix derives from the metric. So I say that to say this, we're not primarily in the matrix. We're primarily in the metrics or the metrical understanding or the intelligence of the metric. The me trick, the me tricking myself into the matrix. The tricking of me. The me trick, the metric, the metrics. So I trick myself into the matrix, meaning that Somebody can be brain dead, right? But they're still here. What the hell is keeping them here? The metrics, the heart. So even when your matrix shuts down, the metrics is still present. Patterns of sound and rhythm. A two dimensional reality. This brings third dimensional reality. Why? Because you have to be genuine, authentic, and honest with what you want to create in your reality. Okay, this is the whole catch of this video. Are we in a matrix? Are we actually within a metrics? We're actually within the metrics, not the matrix. The matrix is just a byproduct of the metrics. It's not the brain keeping us here. It's the heart keeping us here. Primarily, specifically, the heart beat that's keeping us here. This is what I want to make clear, crystal clear on this video. So all this talk about the matrix, this, the matrix, that, the matrix, that, the matrix, this, this, the matrix, all in the matrix, the matrix, the matrix, the matrix, the matrix, the matrix, all day. No, we are in the metrics. Because the matrix exists within the metrics. How do we know once again? Somebody can be brain dead. What they call a vegetable state in the hospital. These unfortunate circumstances that happen to people or the human body or the human organism. But what's still present when the matrix shuts down? The metrics is still present. And when you know about biology or the science of biology, because I'm also a science biologist as well as a metaphysical psychologist, when you understand science biology, the brain and the heart develop simultaneously within the embryo and the fetus. It develops simultaneously. This clouds at the same time this beats. This beats, this clouds. The brain hemispheres, the left and right hemisphere begins to cloud according to the beat. So remember, this is two dimensional. This is third dimensional, two dimensional operation, third dimensional function. What you think your heart will beat and create that reality to match the template of the mind. You get it? So it's your heart that beats a reality around you. So I got this because of my heart. This is my heart. Like once again, I tell you, this is my mind. This is not my home. As a matter of fact, my home is my home. That's why the word home is synonymous with the word hum or hum. Hum is a vibration. And we know the five principles of manifestation beat, wave, pulse, rhythm, vibration. Beat, wave, pulse, rhythm, vibration. 
These are the five principles to manifestation. So it's not primarily the brain or the matrix creating something around you. No, it's the metrics creating something and everything and everyone around you. Your heart doesn't lie. Your brain lies. Your heart doesn't lie. I'm giving you the contrast to decipher what is what and where you may actually be at within a moment in your life. So this creates characters. This creates the environment for the characters to play. We are in a fish bowl, per se. That's why water and air is synonymous. They look like each other. They're transparent, translucent, invisible. One we breathe in through the nose or we intake through the nose. The other we intake through the mouth. One through the nose, the other through the mouth. Water. Okay, so they're synonymous to each other. So what does that mean? What we breathe is also a form of water, which is air. So what does that mean? That means that we are breathing in water. And what are some of the behaviorisms or characteristics of water when it's manipulated? When its elements are manipulated to a certain degree. It also creates a wave, right? There are waves in water that happen at the beach, at the sea, at the river, the lake, whatever. Most likely in seas and lakes. Most likely seas, beaches, things of that nature. Oceans, waves in oceans, right? So the beat creates that wave pattern and it is a sound that forms itself into a rhythm right right it is the matrix that waves our reality around us and as it waves it begins to weave so these waves turn into weaves And we start to web our reality around us and network within it. So you see, it's not the matrix. It's the metrics you want to focus on. And it even ties even into Sufism, ancient understandings, Spiritual technology, where I talked about in the other video um, about the heart aspect. I forgot the title of it. But the, one of the main points in there was the only way out of this place is um, the same way you came in this place is the only way out of this place. You came in through the heart. Like I said, your mother may have loved your father. Or your father may have loved your mother when they were conceiving, or they both may have loved each other when they were conceiving. Or maybe they didn't even love each other, but some aspect of love was, was within them, even from their own parents. So love was present. Love is within the heart. So the only way out of the matrix is through the metrics. The only way out of this place is to go back in through the place which you entered into this place. You didn't come through your mother's womb. You didn't come out of your father's phallus. You came through the heart. Therefore, the only way back out of here is back through the heart. You see, once again, it makes the metrics the primary source of all things, not the matrix. The matrix is secondary. The metric is primary. 
We're not caught in our minds and programmed. We're caught in sound, rhythm, wave, and pattern. But how does this sound, wave, rhythm, and pattern begin? From here. This is where it begins. Because your heart knows what you're true to. Regardless of what your brain may think or what your mouth may run, doesn't give a damn. It knows what it is because it is you and you are it and you can't fool it because it is you. See, there's no way to escape that. You can lie and manipulate and deceive and fool people all day, but your heart knows what's up. And it's a quiet, sacred thing within you. It's none of nobody's business, but you're going to live with what your honest, authentic, genuine, um, and real to within yourself. Okay? That's one of the main points I wanted to make about this show today. Let's go into the next line real quick. It's only about six, not long at all, about six points, seven points. Next doorway is the brain and the heart develop simultaneously within the embryo, I mentioned this before, meaning that the matrix and the metrics, the matrix and the metrics come into being at the same time. That's why it can be very challenging for someone without consciousness and awareness trying to decipher one's purpose from the other purpose because they simultaneously come into being within the embryo and fetus at the same time. So one who is not of their conscious mind or of their awareness, it can be difficult and challenging to try to decipher one purpose from the other purpose if they're not centered in the middle to decipher and see the distinctions and the differentiation between the two. One without consciousness and awareness. But if you have consciousness and awareness and common sense, you can decipher this pretty easy. But it's not about knowing something. It's about applying what you know. Who gives a damn what you know? Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Yeah, I know that. But knowledge ain't a damn thing without application. Once you know something, you apply it. When you apply it, you receive the feedback. That feedback creates the self-realization or the self-reflection. The self-reflection leads to the self-realization. The self-realization is the prize of gnosis. You get the reward or the gift to know thyself. That's the purpose. Okay? Um, that's why it can be very challenging for someone without consciousness and awareness, consciousness and awareness, trying to decipher one's purpose from the other's purpose. Because it is the metrics that makes it possible for the matrix to remain. In other words, there are no thoughts, no thinking, no brain activity at all, period, without a beat in existence first. This shows you just how nothing the matrix is. This is why you had Antiquitous ancient commission, uh, ancient commission lineage on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. When they so called mummified the body, they took out the brain through the nostrils. They dug up in the skull, squirmed it around, and pulled out the brain. They have a Tales from the Crypt episode on this. I forgot what the episode is called, but they show the process of the mummification of someone being mummified or what is called the Saul. I say you well. It's not called the mummy, it's called the Saul. And when they did the Saul process, they pulled the hang or whatever or hook inside of through the nostril of the dead sarcophagus or the dead body and pulled out the brain little by little, scrambled in the skull and pulled out the brain because they knew that the brain was garbage. That it wasn't about the brain, which is why you see my arts or the 42 laws of my art or the 42 assessors of my art um, or the 42 pronunciations of my art or the 42 negative confessions, however you are familiar with it, where my art 
the depiction of the image of holding the heart and the feather on the scale. She's not holding the brain and the feather or the heart and the brain or the brain and the heart. It's the heart and the feather. The heart, if the heart outweighs the feather, you reincarnate. The feather outweighs the heart. You transcend. You graduate on to the next uh, lesson in existence. Or return back to your primal nature, which has no title, no label. It's the just is or the just being or the just as of self, the asness of being. You return and rewind back to your source code, your primal source code. So that is that at the moment. Okay. It is the beat which keeps the body here. Meaning once again, it is the metrics that keeps the matrix here. And even if you notice the movie Matrix, yeah, okay, he was in the matrix, but how was he navigating himself through the matrix? He had to have heart. It wasn't about him believing he can do all this. That's the, the, the sugar coating, the candy coating of the true lesson of that movie. It wasn't the skills he was developing and the memory and believing. It wasn't that primarily. It was because he did it. He finally did things because he had the heart to do it. He had to find the heart to do it. Or else he was stuck in the matrix. So this is not the matrix. Heart deals with convince. I am convinced. Brain deals with belief. Metrics, matrix. Convinced, belief. I'm giving you the difference between the two spectrums of intelligence. And like I said, I do this, my videos, my shows are just simply tools. Even though I have classes, I uh, have classes starting next solar cycle in 2025. And once again, um, some of you guys have signed up. That's appreciated. Um, I want to have a full class and the prices are wonderful. Trust me, you're not. And I'm a certified metaphysical psychologist, which means that other things can transpire where you can leave out with something in life and do with that what you will. And can be certified yourself. So these shows and these videos, right now I'm working on curriculums and PowerPoint presentations and creating certain videos and putting photos or images together for the classes and creating curriculums for next solar cycle. Um, so far, I have a nice amount of students, but I'm always taking in more. Um, the first 50 students get discounts um, on the classes and curriculums. If you find my videos and my shows and my notices of some kind of interest that holds your attention, because like I always tell people, it is about interest and intention. Attention and interest are your two spiritual antennas. When they pick up, do not ignore it. This is how I got into it. Some masters, some elders, some wizards, some sorcerers, occultists, metaphysicians were saying something that instantly caught my attention and it held my interest. And I knew it wasn't of the brain because what they were saying, if my brain judged it, I would have like, yo, these people are crazy. They're insane, huh? I'm getting away from them. But my brain couldn't understand what my heart was holding on to. You see, the brain was trying to put a judgment on it. 
It was trying to, you know, tarnish and corrupt what the heart was receiving. And that's another thing you have to understand too, is that you have to be able to decipher when your heart is going towards something and when your brain is moving towards something. You see, because if your brain is moving towards something and you move with that, you're going to go further into the matrix. But if your heart is moving towards something, it's actually the leader. It brings, in, it brings things in towards it. This is a follower. This is a leader. This is a believer. This is convinced. This is the matrix. This is the metrics. And trust me, what I'm saying in the videos, it gets so vast and so much more clearer. What I say in these videos is straight baby food compared to how the classes and curriculums are actually being etched out and sketched out for the class, for the students. It gets really simple, put it like that. Because these are just symposiums. This reality is about simplicity. You can't have a complex or a complicated mind because you're not gonna get it. As a matter of fact, Complexity and complication is of the brain. Simplicity is of the mind. See, if you live simple and you're very simple minded, that means you have access and cultivated your mind. If you were complex and too complicated to deal with and socially awkward and things of that nature, you are of the static of the brain. This is the static screen. This is the clear screen. The mind is actually here. This is where the mind is at. The mind and the heart is one. But that's a whole nother understanding. I touch upon certain things like that as well within my videos, but you're going to have to go back and look at some of them to understand. See the titles. The titles will take you into where your heart or your spirit is supposed to be navigated into and where your soul is supposed to find itself at. Okay. Um, the next line in the doorway is, now this is very, very interesting. I need you to pay very, very close attention to what I'm going to say right here. Next, this is the fifth line of doorway. So maybe one or two more after this. The body itself is an internal orchestra of rhythm and sound. Directly from the heartbeat itself. The real matrix is not the brain. It's the heart. If you want to say anything is a matrix, like I said, once again, this derives from this. This does not come from this. This comes from this. Or there is no playing in any realm or dimension without this beating, without this first and foremost. So the real matrix is actually here, which is the home of the metrics. Or the metrics is home of the matrix. Um, it's not the brain. The real matrix is not the brain. It's the heart. Or the metrics gives birth to the matrix. Without no metrics, there is no possibility for a matrix to exist. In other words, rhythm and sound is the foundation to the structure of thought and program. Rhythm and sound is the foundation to the structure of thought and program. The heart beating of the heart beats through, understand this real quick, because I'm talking about seeing, like seeing right in front of you right now. And you can apply this practice right now as I'm talking, right around you in your home, right in front of you. Right now what I'm going to say. Just keep this in mind before I say it. I say this. The heart beating of the heart, right? The heart beating of the heart beats through the eyeballs. Why? To create the perceived or believed reality right in front of you. Let me say that one more time. The heart beating of the heart, when the heart beats, the whole body beats. If the whole body beats and the head is attached to the body, you have eye sockets inside of the skull. These eye sockets 
are like caves or caverns for the eyeballs to be in. So when that cave beats two or those holes or that eye socket beats, the eyeballs beat and they vibrate. As they beat, this beating causes a wave in front of you and around you constantly, constantly, constantly. The heart beating of the heart beats also through the eyeballs to create the perceived or believed reality held in place right in front of you. The heartbeat becomes the eye beat. The eye beating creates a wave viewing reality that appears to be still and solid, like this couch, like this bookshelf, like the wall, like me being still. I look like I'm still, but I'm not. Like these books, like the plants, like the ceiling, like the floor. The heartbeat becomes the eye beat. The eye beating creates a wave viewing reality that appears to be still and solid in your view, but in reality isn't still or solid. Never was, never is and never can be. It is actually constant. So what are these things that are looking like they're solid in front of me? If it's not solid or still, then what is it? It's actually constant wave effect in constant motion. This is the understanding of energy in motion or the energy or the energy saying, or the saying of energy where they say, energy can never be destroyed, only transferred and transformed. A beat or a wave is a form of energy in motion, which is kinetic energy, it's always moving. Kinetic just means moving, moving energy. Kinetic energy is always moving. So if something is always moving, why do things look like they're still and they're solid in front of them? There's something keeping this agreement or contract in place or this belief in place. I agree that I'm sitting on the couch. And I believe, if we want to say that, I don't believe in the damn thing. But let's just say, I believe I'm sitting on the couch. Once I don't believe that anymore and I cut that agreement with this third dimensional reality, I fall through the couch. And if I don't believe or agree with a floor, I fall through the floor. Because this is actually just wave patterns. These are wave agreements. I've made wave agreements called the couch. I've made a wave agreement called the laptop. I've made a wave agreement with something called the book. That's why I can hear a sound. Like the heartbeat. It can actually cause a rhythm. You know? When you why do you think this even flows like it's water? Like a pattern. Like a heart. Why do you think there's things that even do that that mimic the same activity as the heart or a wave or a beat or a pattern? Everything around you is saying. I reside inside of your heart only if you knew that this is just imitations and mimics of the heart, not of the brain, the figures, the characters, how it looks, the colors, the depth, the height, the length, the width, the dimension of something was created by the architecture of my brain, but it is my heart which keeps this architecture and scaffolding in place. Because it has to create that beat and that wave has to create a hum, a hum, an environment and an atmosphere. This creates the characters 
within the environment and atmosphere. But if there's no environment and atmosphere, if there's no beat and no wave, no characters exist, no thought forms create. Okay, so never was the eye beating creates a wave viewing reality that appears to be still and solid in your view, but in reality isn't, never was, never is, never can be. It is actually constant wave effect in constant motion. This is the understanding of energy in motion, or the saying of energy, saying that energy can never be destroyed, only transferred and transformed. That is the invisible wave reality being beaten specifically through the pupils of the eyeballs. I'm making this real simple. I'm making this like baby food for y'all. But this gets a lot deeper. But that's only for classic curriculum. Okay. Now, this is something you can do right now. Right now. You can even pause the video right after I say this and just look around. And I have plenty of applications of things which I have only leaving for classes, which you can do right now and begin to alter your perception and transform your reality right in front of you. Try this. Or do this. If you stand still and stare at anything in your home for a period of 10 to 12 seconds, you will begin to shake, beat, and move. Or for a period of 10 to 12 seconds, you will begin to see that supposed still or solid thing begin to shake, beat, and move. Look at anything in your home right now. Your lamp, garbage, bowl, pen, pencil, books, rubber, scent, candle, printer, charger, phone, notebook, pen, pencil, whatever. Headphones, doesn't matter. Stare at it for 10 to 12 seconds and you will see that thing begin to shake, beat, and move. As if it was inside some sort of transparent water wave-like existence. And as you're staring at this thing, you're going to feel your eyeballs match the eye beats of the heartbeat. And as you're staring at this thing and you feel your eyeballs start to beat, to match the same beat as the heartbeat, you're going to begin to see that thing begin to beat. Whatever you're staring at, it's going to match the beat of the eyeballs because the beat of the eyeballs is the same beat of the heart. Now, I thought things were solid. I thought things were still. Why is it moving? Why is it beating? If that thing begins to beat as if it has a heartbeat, as if a remote control has a heartbeat, or headphones has a heartbeat, your laptop has a heartbeat, or a notebook has a heartbeat, or a pen has a heartbeat, or a pencil has a heartbeat, or a lamp has a heartbeat, or a stove has a heartbeat, or a garbage pail has a heartbeat, or a room has a heartbeat, or a mop has a heartbeat, or your shoes have a heartbeat, or a wall has a heartbeat, or a ceiling has a heartbeat, or a floor has a heartbeat, you know they don't have heartbeats. Only thing that has that heartbeat is you. But if that thing was still and solid, why is it beating? Why 
Why is it moving? Because they're not with you. They're not solid. They're not real. They're agreements. They're tangible contracts. See? They're actually eating from the hearts through the blackness of the pupil of your eyeballs and projected out. That's the whole catch. Okay. That is a catch of that point. Next line of the doorway is So once again, if it's beating from the heart, it is the matrix or the metrics that you want. Not the matrix. There is no lamp or couch to be put in chair or bookshelf, stove, countertop, pots, whatever. Furniture, period. To put in nowhere if there's no home to put it in, right? Why would you buy all this ambiance of a home and have no home to put it in? The furniture and things of that nature, statues, they're going to adorn your home with crystal stones, whatever, are things of the brain, figurines, characters, things. But home. Is where the heart is, right? That saying, you know, that saying, home is where the heart is, because the heart is the home. This is just the ambiance. So literally, as the body, me being the body inside of my home, this is the brain inside of its mind. That's how it goes. Right now, you watching this, you are a brain inside of your mind watching another brain be inside of my mind. That's the reality. True reality. Right? What they say the biggest brain is. What they say the biggest brain is. Exactly. The human body is the biggest brain. This is the biggest brain. Once again, neurocytes in the brain, melanocytes in the skin. They look identical to each other, identical. From two things called dendrites and axons. Neurocytes has a dendritical axonic intelligence. Melanocytes has a dendritical axonic intelligence and these dendrites and axons are nothing but just like kind of intelligent nerve endings to connect one electrical impulse to another what we know as synapses so you're not a walking body you're a walking brain what do you taste with Don't taste with your tongue. You taste with your brain. How do you feel things? You don't feel things with your hand. You feel things with your brain. What do you smell with? You don't smell things with your nose. You smell with your brain. So, in other words, you are the walking matrix adorned by your metrics. The metrics is within the matrix, but it is the matrix that is governed by the metrics. This is why you can become so fooled. 
why so easily get tripped up and get confused? So yes, the matrix is the brain, but you are the biggest brain. The body is the biggest brain. So the body itself is the matrix, not just this thing in the skull. Okay. The next doorway is the heart is the true mind that beats the perceived and or believed focused into a physical wave mattered reality. Once again, the heart is the true mind that beats the perceived and or believed focus into a physical wave mattered reality. That's where the saying mind over matter comes from. But I'm going to put a spin on this mind over matter saying that we all know. It's not really mind over matter, just like it's not really the matrix. It's not the matrix, it's the metrics. So take the word matrix out of your vocabulary and out of your mind, out of your lexicon. It is the metrics that we are in. And it's not really mind over matter. That's old. That's not what it is. Take mind over matter out of the vocabulary. I'm replace that with this right now. It's actually mind over magic. And then matter follows. So in other words, the new saying is mind over magic. Magic over matter. Because the mind is magic. The mind is magical. How is it magical? It's magical because you think that you have a human body. That's how magical it is. You think you're actually human. You think you're actually physical. You think you're actually a person. That's how magical the mind is. That's how magical the mind is. You think you're in a home. You think you're sitting on a couch. You think you're wearing glasses. You think you have a chain on. You think you have books. You're sitting next to books. You think you're talking on a laptop. That's how magical the mind is. So it's mind over magic and magic over matter. It's no longer mind over matter. It's mind over magic, magic over matter. Okay? This is something to understand. Connect with me on this perception real quick. We are actually a walking beat traveling through wave atmospheres, trying to vibrate realities into a rhythmic existence, which is what we call manifestation. So this is just another way of a more <clears throat> detailed um, description of manifestation to break that down is we are a walking beat like I said you're the walking brain the walking matrix inside of its own metrics you're a walking beat traveling through wave atmospheres trying to vibrate realities into a rhythmic existence. Get it? The metrics is really just beat, wave, pulse, rhythm, and vibration. Like I told you before, the five principles of manifestation. And this goes very deep into the curriculum and the classes that's 
starting next solar cycle. This is actually a curriculum by itself. Um, there's a lot more to it, but I'm going to save it for the classes. Hit me on the email below. Sign up. Stay in tuned and tune in for more. So, once again, are you in the matrix? Or are you in the metrics? Am I as, as I am, as you are? I'll see you guys in class. Until then, keep studying. One, zero.